Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. What a joy it is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word, as the Lord uses his word to strengthen our faith in him and increase our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our savior. Today, we remember the patriarch Joseph. Joseph was the son of the patriarch Jacob and Rachel. The favorite son of his father, Joseph incurred the jealousy of his older brothers who sold him into slavery in Egypt and told their father he was dead. In Egypt, Joseph became the chief servant in the home of Potiphar, a military official. Because Joseph refused to commit adultery with his master's wife, he was unjustly accused of attempted rape and thrown into jail. Years later, he interpreted dreams for Pharaoh, who then freed Joseph from prison and placed him in charge of the entire country. When his brothers came from Canaan to Egypt in search of food, they did not recognize Joseph. He eventually revealed his identity to them, forgave them, and, and invited both them and his father to live in Egypt. Joseph is especially remembered and honored for his moral uprightness and for his willingness to forgive his brothers. <clears throat> Our psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 89. I have found David, my servant. I have anointed him with my sacred oil. My hand will always be with him, and my arm will strengthen him. The enemy will not oppress him. The wicked will not afflict him. I will crush his foes before him and strike those who hate him. My faithfulness and love will be with him, and through my name his horn will be exalted. I will extend his power to the sea and his right hand to the rivers. He will call to me, you are my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. I will also make him my firstborn, greatest of the kings of the earth. Today we are going to hear about the ninth plague that the Lord sent upon the nation of Egypt and also God's announcement of the most horrible of the plagues, the 10th plague, the death of the firstborn. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven and there will be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven and there was thick darkness throughout the land of Egypt for three days. One person could not see another, and for three days they did not move from where they were. Yet all the Israelites had light where they lived. Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go, worship the Lord. Even your families may go with you. Only your flocks and herds must stay behind. Moses responded, you must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings to prepare for the Lord our God. Even our livestock must go with us. Not a hoof will be left behind because we will take some of them to worship the Lord our God. <clears throat> we will not know what we will use to worship the Lord until we get there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was unwilling to let them go. Pharaoh said to him, leave me. Make sure you never see my face again. For on the day you see my face, you will die. As you have said, Moses replied, I will never see your face again. The Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you out of here. Now announce to the people that both men and women should ask their neighbors for silver and gold items. The Lord gave the people favor with the Egyptians. In addition, Moses himself was very highly regarded in the land of Egypt by Pharaoh's officials and the people. So Moses said, this is what the Lord says. About midnight, I will go throughout Egypt, and every firstborn male in the land of Egypt will die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the firstborn of the servant girl who is at the grindstones, as well as every firstborn of the livestock. Then there will be a great cry of anguish through all the land of Egypt, such as never was before or ever will be again. But against all the Israelites, whether people or animals, not even a dog will snarl, so that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. 
all these officials of yours will come down to me and bow before me saying, get out, you and all the people who follow you. After that, I will get out. And he went out from Pharaoh's presence, fiercely angry. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go out of his land. As we continue reading in the book of Hebrews today, we're going to hear that the rest we find in Jesus is even greater than the rest that the people of Israel received when they found rest in the promised land. Therefore, since the promise to enter his rest remains, let us beware that none of you be found to have fallen short. For we also have received the good news just as they did. But the message they heard did not benefit them, since they were not united with those who heard it in faith. For we who have believed enter the rest in keeping with what he has said. So I swore in my anger, they will not enter my rest. Even though his works have been finished since the foundation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in this way. And on the seventh day, God rested from all his works. Again, in that passage, he says, they will never enter my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news did not enter because of disobedience, he again specifies a certain day, today. He specified this through David after such a long time. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. Therefore, a Sabbath rest remains for God's people. For the person who has entered his rest has rested from his own works, just as God did from his. Let us then make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will fall into the same pattern of disobedience. For the word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. No creature is hidden from him, but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Our writing for today comes from John Chrysostom. I would like to tell you an instructive and profitable story. What is it? Once, when a persecution arose and a severe war was raging against the church, two men were arrested. The one man was ready to suffer anything at all. The other man was prepared to submit with firmness to be beheaded, but was afraid and trembling and shied away from other tortures. So how did things turn out for them? When the judge was seated, he ordered the one who was ready to endure anything to be beheaded. The other he caused to be hung up and tortured, and that not once or twice from city to city. Now, why was this permitted? That he might recover through torture that quality of mind which he had neglected, that he might shake off all cowardice and no longer be afraid to endure anything. Joseph, too, when he wanted to escape from prison, was left to remain there. For hear him saying, Indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. Please mention me to the king. And for this, he was made to remain, that he might learn not to place hope or confidence in men, but to cast everything on God. Knowing these things, therefore, let us give thanks to God, and let us do all things that are expedient for us, that we may obtain the good things to come through Jesus Christ our Lord with whom to the Father be glory with the Holy Spirit, now and ever and world without end. Amen. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Lord Jesus, Think on Me.
Lord Jesus, think on me by anxious thoughts oppressed. Let me your loving servant be and taste your promised rest. And we pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our Lenten Catechesis today, we continue considering the Lord's Supper and especially look at these questions. How can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? And who receives the power and benefit of this sacrament? We speak about the bread and wine, that is, Christ's body and blood, and has the words attached to it. That, we say, is truly the treasure, and nothing else, through which such forgiveness is gained. Now, the only way this treasure is passed along and made our very own is in the words, given and shed for you. For in the words, you have both truths, that it is Christ's body and blood, and that it is yours as a treasure and gift. Although the work is done and the forgiveness of sins is secured by the cross, it cannot come to us in any other way than through the word. How would we know about it otherwise, that such a thing was accomplished or was to be given to us, unless it were presented by preaching or the oral word? But now the entire gospel and the article of the creed, I believe in the holy Christian church, the forgiveness of sins, and so on, are embodied by the word in this sacrament and presented to us. The fanatics cannot say that these words in the sacrament are of no use, just as they dare not say that the entire gospel or God's word, apart from the sacrament, is of no use. Whoever believes the words has what they declare and bring, because Christ offers and promises forgiveness of sin. It cannot be received except by faith. This faith he himself demands in the word when he says, given and shed for you. As if he said, for this reason I give it, and ask you to eat and to drink it, that you may claim it as yours and enjoy it. Whoever now accepts these words and believes what they declare, what, and believes that what they declare is true, has forgiveness. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time together with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.